This video is sponsored by Fume. More on them later. Last summer, I made a video about testing toroidal propellers on my electric boat, and they turned out to be pretty inefficient. This doesn't necessarily mean that toroidal propellers in general are bad, but instead it just means that this specific toroidal propeller design is bad. I took what I learned from that experiment and used it to design what I thought would be an improved version, but that also performed very poorly compared to a traditional propeller. After all those fails, I was extra surprised when I tested out a third toroidal propeller design, this time on my V8 powered paddleboard, and it resulted in a higher top speed than a standard propeller with the same diameter. Finally, it seemed that one of my toroidal propellers actually showed signs of superior performance. I was so blown away by this that I decided to convert my V8 paddleboard to electric. This would allow me to collect precise power consumption data and scientifically compare different propeller designs. So that's what this video is about. Let's get started on the electric conversion. After giving the V8 one last run, I took it off the board and started designing a mount that would allow me to attach an electric skateboard motor directly to the vertical shaft that comes out of the stern drive unit. I'm using this little coupler to adapt the 8mm drive shaft to the 10mm motor shaft. This is the motor mounting block, and it got attached with a bunch of M3 thread forming screws. Here's the motor going on. It's one of the two motors that I had used on my 50 mile per hour snowcat. The aluminum motor mount then got screwed onto the motor mounting block, and with that the stern drive unit was converted to electric. So much simpler than the V8. I added an ArduPilot flight controller so that I could log the power and GPS speed to be used for measuring the efficiency. Here's the maiden voyage with the new motor, and I'm starting off with the same large B-series propeller that I was using in the V8 video. If there's one thing that puts a smile on my face, it's riding on a new craft for the first time. It's just such a great feeling. That was not even very much throttle. Yeah, let's go full throttle. <laughs> For this test, I had the ESC set to max out at 100 phase amps, which is way too much for this motor. It would get really hot really fast, so I wouldn't have been able to sustain this speed for very long before the motor drive went into thermal foldback. This thing is rad! <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. This thing is not attached to the paddleboard well enough. It was definitely faster than the V8, and this is even just running on a 6S battery. I could run it on 12S and go even faster. After trying it out with the big B-series propeller, I switched over to the toroidal propeller. With this, I was still able to go decently fast, but not quite as fast as before. After that maiden voyage, it was time to start the science. Back when I was testing different propellers with the V8 engine, I had intended to make a toroidal propeller and a regular propeller that were the same diameter, for a relatively fair comparison. However, I later realized that I had somehow screwed up the scaling at some point in the modeling process, and it turned out that the regular propeller was actually 9mm smaller than the toroidal propeller. So that's probably the smoking gun as to why it was outperformed by the toroidal propeller, but we won't know for sure until we get some cold hard data. For this next round of testing, I made three new propellers that each have the exact same 6 inch diameter as the toroidal propeller. Each one has a different pitch ratio so we can find out which is optimal for the RPM and speed that we'll be operating at. To make these propellers, I'm using this free online B-series prop generator, more specifically the geometry tool. If you enter in a few settings, it spits out a nice clean B-series propeller. After that, I loaded the 3D model into Onshape, and then made this thing here, which is basically just a digital mold. Having that allowed me to quickly and easily do a Boolean subtraction from each of the three flavors of B-Series propeller. That would create all the features which would allow me to print these propellers and mount them on the paddleboard shaft. If you want to access any of these models yourself, you're in luck! Thanks to Onshape and their cloud-based CAD program, the native files are just a click away. Visit the link in the description and sign up for a free Onshape account to download, copy, or edit these files yourself. Next up, I printed all of these propellers out of Gray Pro resin on the Form 3 Plus. This resin is great for propellers because it's strong and durable, but it still holds its original shape over time. After some post-processing, the propellers could be installed onto the shaft and fixed in place with an M3 screw. With that, it was time to head to the lake for the first efficiency test. So I have the VESC set to do a maximum of 35 phase amps. So that way I'll just turn up the throttle to full blast and it'll be pulling 35 amps for each propeller and that way we'll be able to do a solid comparison. My idea was that I would use a fresh battery for each propeller so that the voltage was the same for each test run. If the voltage is the same, that would make the current proportional to the power, and the power is the metric we need to be looking at to measure the efficiency. Or so I thought. Turns out I was wrong. I'll explain why later. So I did six laps, each with a different propeller following the same course. I thought we were controlling for power, which would make our speed the dependent variable in this experiment. So just to recap, these are our six contestants. 
we have the big B-series propeller, the toroidal propeller, and the smaller B-series propeller. It's 9mm smaller than all of these. And then over here, we have the three B-series propellers of different pitch angles that are the same diameter as the toroidal propeller. Sorry that's so confusing. Man, what a great invention. Everyone needs a powered paddleboard. <laughs> this is great. Here's what our speed data looks like throughout the course of the test runs, and we can find the average speed of each run to get our final results. Turns out the toroidal propeller won. OMG, this amazing new technology is going to save us all. Eh, not so fast. Turns out I did this all wrong. I thought that if I kept the battery voltage consistent, then the motor would be putting the same amount of power into each propeller, and thus we'd have a fair comparison. This all would be true if the motor driver were controlling the battery current, but it's not. Instead, it's controlling the phase current. Battery current is measured here, whereas phase current is measured here. That's the difference. So, long story short, each one of our propellers were not consuming the same amount of power. The toroidal propeller was likely getting much more power delivered to it than the lowest performer. I'll explain why this is towards the end of the video, since if I do it now, half of you will probably leave. But anyways, let's now run a proper test. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to talk to you today about bad habits, like wasting hours testing propellers the wrong way. Bad habits can seem like they're impossible to break, but what if I told you the best way to break a bad habit isn't to quit cold turkey, but instead just remove the bad from your habit. In steps, Fume, the sponsor of today's video. Fume is an award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is all natural. Instead of vapors, Fume just uses a blast of flavored air. Instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural flavors that are delicious. It's not just the flavors that get me all riled up, it's also the aesthetics. I mean, just look at this thing. The machined stainless steel mouthpiece, the lathe turned maple barrel, the cast detent rosette pattern for precision airflow control. It's just a work of art by golly, it's gorgeous. I find this thing as fantastic to fondle as a fidget spinner. It's not only your foul fiery habits that Fume can help free. When I find myself craving a flavorful distraction during a long day in front of the computer, Fume is perfect. Just breathe in for a tasty alternative to unhealthy snacks. It fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. They offer all sorts of flavor options you can choose from. My favorites are orange vanilla and crisp mint. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up a journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com slash rctestflight or scan the QR code and use code rctestflight to get 10% off of your journey pack today. Now let's go rerun that propeller test the right way. It turns out that the VESC motor drive software has a max power parameter, and when I set this to 200 watts, the motor never draws more than 200 watts. And since our max phase amps are set high enough to not be the limiting factor, the motor will now be capped at exactly 200 watts regardless of which propeller is connected. With these new settings, I headed back to the lake for another round of propeller testing. On this day, the water ended up being too choppy, a rogue splash hit something critical, and my motor stopped working, so I had to paddle all the way back. The next day, I tried again and everything went smoothly. I was also in a more protected bay, so there was likely even less influence from any slight breeze that might have been present. Here are the results. This time, the 6-inch high-pitch B-series propeller performed the best, with the big B-series propeller coming in right behind it. Turns out the toroidal propeller was not the most efficient after all. This is what I had expected to find, because this toroidal propeller is actually just a shrunken down version of this propeller, and with slightly less angle of attack at the tip. And that propeller performed very poorly. Speaking of tip angle of attack, what is this? It looks like there was a seventh contestant. There was indeed. So back in my original toroidal propeller testing video, I was talking about how Shero Marine's patent shows that their propellers have a positive angle of attack at the tip of the toroidal loop. This effectively pulls the surrounding water in from the sides, which they say increases efficiency. This all makes sense, but I got confused when I was looking at pictures of their propellers, and I could swear that the tips had a negative angle of attack, not a positive angle of attack like the patent talks about. Gasp! What if they made their patent backwards to throw off copycats? <laughs> OMG, I just had to test it. So I went into Onshape and made a version of the toroidal propeller where everything was identical except that it had a negative angle of attack at the tip. And after that, I printed it and tested it along with the other propellers. And it performed the worst out of them all. So maybe Shero isn't trying to dupe us. I still have no idea why it totally looks like the propellers have a negative angle of attack at the tip. Maybe it's just an optical illusion. Who knows? So we've done our efficiency test, but what's the point of knowing which propeller is best if we don't use it? Today I'm going to do an endurance test to see how much range this thing has. I've got the smaller high pitch B-series propeller on the back since that seems to give me the most efficiency. And I've got a 25 amp hour, 24 volt LIF EPO4 battery here and a 10 amp hour 6 cell LiPo as a backup. 
I also put a steering servo on the back so that I can control steering with my radio here. See that? Pretty slick. Hopefully we can run an autonomous mission with the GPS and the Ardu Pilot on there. I was running Mission Planner on this old Android phone that made it kind of difficult to change settings on the autopilot. For that reason, I was unable to get it to run the waypoint mission I had uploaded, so I had to steer it manually. But oh well, not a big deal. On my journey, I tried to drive at different speeds so that I could see how speed affects the efficiency once I analyzed the data later on. Oh by the way, after posting my previous toroidal propeller testing video, I was amazed at how many people out there seemed to be interested in propeller design. That gave me the idea to host a propeller design competition where viewers can send in their propeller designs and I'll 3D print them and test them to find a winner. If you're interested, follow rctestflight underscore on Instagram. That's where I'll be posting updates and instructions on how to enter. Anyways, I ended up calling it quits at 7 miles because it was kind of cold on this day, but the battery wasn't even close to empty. So now I've got the battery charging. I'm using this power meter to measure the watt hours that the battery absorbs. And this is the same charger that I used to charge the battery before the mission. So it should charge it up to exactly the same voltage and we'll be able to see exactly how many watt hours of power we consumed throughout that voyage. This thing just finished charging. It says 13.9 amp hours and 385 watt hours. So 385 watt hours and 11.3 kilometers averages out to be 34 watt hours per kilometer. That's our efficiency over the voyage. This battery has 640 watt hours, so I only used 60% of its capacity. That means I could have gone 18.7 kilometers or 11.6 miles if I hadn't gotten too cold and bored. This Power Queen 25.6 volt 100 amp hour battery that I used for my boat has 2,560 watt hours. So if I strapped that onto the paddleboard, I could go 75 kilometers or 46 miles, assuming I was going at the same speed. It would take me 9.5 hours to go that far. I used a program called Mav Explorer to analyze the Ardu Pilot log data, and that shows us our instantaneous efficiency at different points in the voyage. With that data, I was able to check the efficiency at different speeds, and here's what we get. It's very efficient at low speeds, and gets much worse as we go faster and faster. If I took my speed all the way down to 0.8 meters per second with the 2500 watt hour battery, then I could go 427 kilometers, or 265 miles. A journey that long would take 6 days of driving non-stop. Don't get excited, I'm not doing that. After the endurance test, I switched over to a LiPo battery that could handle higher discharge currents for some full throttle testing. I still had the heavy lithium iron phosphate battery on board, and I didn't have the phase current turned up as high as I did during the first ever test of this motor, so I probably wasn't going as fast as I was then, but I was still able to get up to 3.2 meters per second, or a little over 7 miles per hour. Not bad, that's barely fast enough to get a speeding ticket in the no wake zone. Next I hopped off and tried driving it via RC without me on it. Okay, let's go full throttle. <laughs> it's so fast. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. How much weight can you put in there and get power? Just me. With nobody on board, it got up to 18 kilometers per hour, or 11.2 miles per hour. So that's fun. Who would have thought that paddleboards make such great RC boats? So now I want to go back and talk a little bit more about my propeller comparison testing. It's worth noting that the efficiency test I did does not tell us which one of these propellers is more efficient in general. It only tells us which one of these propellers is more efficient when paired with this specific motor and while operating at this specific power level and speed. It's not impossible that a different propeller could end up winning if I re-ran this test at, say, 2000 watts instead of 200 watts. But from a practicality perspective, 200 watts is pretty representative of the power levels I'd normally be using on this paddleboard. So for all I care, the 6-inch high-pitch B-series propeller is the best for most everything I'm going to be doing with it. Now generally, if you take the motor specs out of the equation, a bigger propeller should always be more efficient than a smaller one of the same design. But in this case, our bigger propeller was simply too big for this motor. So how can this be? Well, the thing to understand here is with electric motors, torque is proportional to phase current, and RPM, or speed, is proportional to voltage. In order for the motor to run this big propeller at our maximum power limit of 200 watts, it's going to require more torque and less RPM than the smaller propellers. Or in other words, more current and less voltage. 
So even though this big propeller is being fed the same amount of power as the smaller propellers, it's pulling more current. And more current means more resistive losses in the wires and the motor. So the motor itself is actually operating less efficiently with the big propeller. Pretty interesting. After my initial attempt at measuring the efficiency of all these propellers, I had said that my test was useless because the ESC was set up to control phase current instead of power. So why is this? If I had set up the ESC to control battery current instead of phase current, this test would have been a bit more acceptable. Each prop would have been drawing the same amount of power out of the battery, and it would have been a more fair comparison, since the battery voltage was consistent for each test. However, since the ESC was controlling for phase current instead, the smaller props that had less rotational resistance in the water were actually getting more electrical power delivered to them than the bigger props. This is because the phase voltage, or duty cycle, is proportional to the RPM. And since the RPM was higher for these props, the phase voltage was higher. So, higher phase voltage times constant phase current equals higher power. So that explains why we got higher speeds with the propellers that had less rotational resistance. They were causing more energy to be sucked out of the battery than the larger props. So this test was totally useless. My test with controlled battery watts was much more useful. It turns out this is pretty much the same reason why the toroidal propeller might have done better on the gasoline-powered V8 engine. It had less rotational resistance in the water, which leads to higher RPM. Higher RPM means more combustion cycles per second, which means more gasoline, which means more power. It's really cool how the same concept can be applied to both gas and electric motors here. The fact that the props with less resistance were pulling more power might also indicate that all of these propellers may be a bit too big for this motor, if the goal is to maximize power, that is. Big thanks to Oscar from O-Drive for helping me out with all the technical motor stuff in this video. I sure did learn a lot. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.